Hi guys, uh, welcome to another episode, a very special summer episode of Alibi Cast, a shameless podcast. I'm Holly. I'm Melissa. And I'm Saray. And we're going to spend a few minutes talking about some uh, recent uh, shameless news, uh, which is they have moved up the um, premiere of Shameless Season 7. Uh, usually we would expect it to start in January because it has the last six seasons, but this year it's going to start in October, so technically we get two seasons of Shameless in one year, uh, or at least one and a half. I'm not sure if they're planning on wrapping it up by the end of the year because October, depending on, I think it's October 3rd, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. It's early October, so depending on what they they do with the holidays. Yeah, Mm -hmm. if they don't skip a week, it could be done before the end of the calendar year. But since most shows go off during the Christmas, Thanksgiving time period, we may be looking at, you know, a few episodes into the first of the year, but that's a little strange for Shameless. Um, And so uh, we got some questions when this news came out of people wanting us to talk about what we thought about that decision and what it would mean for the show. Um, I think because, at least for our listeners and for us, season six wasn't like favorite <laughs> the word you're looking for holly is good it was <laughs> good. good it was our least favorite um so i think there was concern among some people mm. that not only was season six not good but suddenly season seven is Being coming rushed. back quicker um and whether or not we thought that that meant that season seven doesn't have as much chance to maybe fix some of the problems that they have um So, time clearly hasn't been helping the past season. I don't like. Yeah, it didn't. More time isn't necessarily going to make it any better. They had the same amount of time as usual last year, and last year was not good. No. So, yeah, I mean, for one thing, we don't know when they knew that they were going to be premiering early. Mm -hmm. So, they may have known for a while. Yeah, if they knew for a while and moved their schedule back a little bit. Um, then maybe, you know, maybe they got started planning earlier and they're not actually going to have any less planning and writing time than they usually do. It's also possible because normally they finish filming and cutting together all of the episodes before the first episode of the season airs, and it's possible that they'll continue filming after the first episode airs like a normal yeah like a regular regular network television show does they're still filming episode eight while they're airing episode four or whatever Mm -hmm. so that's that's possible yeah and i you know i think we'll obviously you know be keeping an eye on on like cast and writer social media and stuff we may get an idea of how that's gonna work yeah um yeah, and I, I mean, I honestly think that time crunch or no time crunch, the biggest thing in the quality of the season is what the choices that the writers are making. And whether or not they fix some of that in season seven has a lot to do with whether or not they think they made any bad choices in season six. Which I'm not convinced I, they do think they made bad choices. I don't think they think that at all, but... Right. So, which is these, fair. These are our not hopeful faces. <laughs> so, I mean, they wrote it. It's fair to be proud of it. Yeah. However, incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. I am a little curious if the shooting schedule and everything has changed up what that means for availability of, uh, ho- again, hopefully, like people in the cast um, knew ahead of time so that they. Because a lot of the shame, a lot of the people that are on Shameless book appearances on other shows. Mm-hmm. But realistically speaking, um, their contracts would require that Shameless be in the number one shooting priority. Yeah. So if they signed other things that I'll would back impede, out. they would have to back out. Right. Or for series, for series regulars and stuff, there may you know with like guest stars, people who are not in every episode. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be a little bit different story, but uh, generally for, say, all the Gallagher kids and Kevin V and Frank, that would be the case that they would have to accommodate Shameless. Um, Unless 
the producers give them a pass for whatever reason. Yeah. Like they did with Cameron, Cameron. during season four. Yeah, when he was shooting The Giver. Uh, Cameron, I know, is doing a guest stint on something called Son of Zorn. <laughs> Which we had to look up this weekend while at ATX because it was on some of the... It was on our lanyards. It was on the lanyards that they give you with your badge. And, and boy, does that look weird. Yeah. I mean, like, super weird. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with that show. It's animation and Meets live, live action. action. The animated character looks like He-Man. Like, what if He-Man had a non-animated human family? Yeah. Yeah. Not not a has... que- literally not a question I ever wondered or wanted the answer There's to. There's someone that has some like <laughs> 80s things they're still working through. Yes. They and saw they, Beastmaster they were, one too many yeah, times. <laughs> and they're able to work through it via a new show on Fox in the More fall. therapy is what is necessary, but... Call your doctor instead, dude, because I don't know what's happening here. They didn't... Our lanyards have Son of Zorn on it, but there were no, there was no like presence for the show here at the festival at all. Um, there wasn't a screening or anything, so I guess they were just trying to get their name out there. Um, we are at the ATX Television Festival this weekend. This is why we're all physically together for once. Yay. Yep. So, something that we do every year, um, at least this is our fourth year uh, mm-hmm. together for this festival, and we've bought our passes for next year. Uh, I don't think they've ever done a shameless panel here. No. No. Um, but, you know, you, you do, almost every year you wind up finding somebody who's got some sort of shameless connection. This year um, we saw Amanda from yes. Shameless. They did. I didn't. Her we hair just looks fantastic. saw her walk by. She did look beautiful. Yes. We didn't go to the panel she was on. So know. we sadly did not get to ask her any Amanda questions. I mean, and it was a Superstore panel, so it probably would have been frowned upon had we asked her Amanda questions. We have Turing really... I would have done it anyway. I know, right? <laughs> we generally have really strict standards for what we think people should be asking questions about in panels, so... Yeah, brief side note, if you ever come to a festival or anything where there's a and a don't start your question with a story about yourself. That's not why anyone is here. No. It's been bugging us all weekend. All weekend long. Yeah. Um, Krista Vernoff is he- was here for some other things. She used to write for Shameless, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael but- Malley was here. He was a writer and producer. We didn't see him. No. No, I didn't see Michael Malley either. Mm-hmm. What well, was he, he here for? Some- uh, he has a show on Stars, I think, or... No... I, he ha, he has a new show oh. that he's looking the festival book. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you. We'll just sit here. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> They're good waiting. I can't believe we managed to talk about the scene, the season moving thing in like five minutes because we're not known for being brevity brief. is not our much like Aaron Sorkin suit. yesterday. <laughs> We did get to see Aaron Sorkin. That's not related to Shameless, but we did get to go to the West Wing reunion yesterday. That was a lot of fun. But we should talk about maybe we did see at least one thing here that we can tell everybody that they should watch, which is Pitch. Pitch on Fox, which uh, starts in the fall at some point. We're not sure if it'll be post the actual baseball season, but we all went to that screening and it was fantastic. Yeah. It's about, if you haven't heard of it, um, it's about a young lady who is the first woman to play in Major League Baseball. Uh, She's a pitcher. Uh, She's a woman of color. It should be, uh, we really enjoyed the pilot. Mark Paul Gossler is in it. Allie Larder is in it. Uh, Mark Consuelos is in it. Mike Beach. Al Boule. Always Al Boule. (laughs) Uh, is fantastic in that pilot, uh, and we'll probably be tweeting about it. So you follow us on Twitter. We'll be talking about it, and we'll let you know when it's gonna when it finally has an air date. But that is definitely recommended for yeah, everybody. We were all to check excited out. to watch it, and then when it was over, we were more excited yes. about the show. I enjoyed it a lot. Also, we did feel that there was a couple in it that reminded us a lot of Kevin, Kevin B. B. Yes, yeah. It's if Kevin V had money, it would be that's this right. Couple. That's right. 
Um, the Mike O'Malley was here as the creator and producer of Survivor's Remorse. What is that on? Channel. I'm not seeing. Oh, it doesn't it say, say, but it's. It appears to be. A black family that is it's coping been, with tragic loss of a family member. It's been on for three seasons. This is its third season. Sorry, Mike. No idea what it is. We we have literally never heard of who, this. Who was in it? Um, it doesn't say because they're not. No. Can you tell in the picture? None of them look familiar to me. Sorry, guys. It's a very small picture, but. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of There was a show that was canceled the other day. It was like, such and such show has been canceled at Hulu. And I'm like, I didn't know that was a show at Yeah, we've Hulu. reached the point of like. We're at peak TV. Yeah, we there's don't, like we just don't, such we can't keep track. online show saturation that I can't possibly. No. Let alone not even watch them, just hear that they exist. Which is <laughs> not possible anymore. We we went to, as we mentioned, we went to the West Wing panel. You guys went to the Ugly Betty reunion last mm-hmm. night. Hashtag Hulu brought back Ugly Betty. Thank you. <laughs> And America Ferrera. And America you. Ferrera, thank you. <laughs> we saw Connie Britton's hair in person. It's a religious Always experience. a life-changing moment for everyone. So, I don't know, like, if you haven't watched Friday Night Lights, go watch Friday Night Lights. Mm-hmm. Watch Friday Night Lights. Uh, we just went to the OC script read, where they read the pilot. The it's script... a sort of a new tradition. Yeah, this, it's like, a new thing. Last year and this year they've done where they take, like, a, like a pretty famous pilot and they recruit actors who were here for other shows to read the script. So they cast the different parts for that pilot, um, and they all sit at a big table and read the script. And, and somebody reads, like, the the stage directions so that you can it's understand the what yeah, the, the... The writer reads mm-hmm. this, or showrunner in, in this case, both, uh, reads the stage directions. And then just a bunch of actors who are here for the festival read the parts they have a tradition of doing a gender flip so this year was the oc last year was dawson's creek so the core four are always gender flipped so it was last year may whitman and abigail spencer playing dawson and joey and i can't remember um patrick j adams was yeah was yeah so this year for the oc may whitman was seth patrick j adams was Marissa, mm-hmm. um, Matt Loria Matt was, Loria was summer. summer. He was the greatest summer. <laughs> the greatest summer. Um, and Ariel Kebble was Ariel Kebel was Ryan, Ryan. Ryan. Ryan Atwood. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, even Sandy and Kirsten mm-hmm. were gender, were gender flipped. flipped. Yeah. And I, by I, the way, yeah. Anson Mount turns out is the greatest Kirsten Cohen. In, since I Kirsten mean, Cohen. Like, since Kirsten. Kirsten Cohen. He was fantastic. Also, surprise guest Tate Donovan, original Jimmy, played Jimmy. And all of these panels will eventually be on YouTube. ATX mm-hmm. has their mm-hmm. own channel. So even if you don't come here, you, you can, can watch them. You still see them. Though I assume the pitch one won't air until much later because... Spoilers! Things, yeah, things that have... That are previews that don't air, like they show Preacher and Unreal, and that'll show in a couple of days. So by the time that goes up, you'll have seen it already if you watch those shows. But Pitch is months away, so that'll probably be months away till you yeah. can watch that panel. Because, yeah. yeah, spoilers on that one. Anything else about the festival? I don't think so. We went to a, um, I went to a panel about um, writing romance on TV. Mm. Nobody mentioned Shameless, sadly. Probably yeah. a good thing that they didn't. I don't know if they would have wanted to deal with me. I kind well, of feel like we're the contingency of shameless fandom fans. Yes. Yeah. here. That's us. It's it's just us. It's mm-hmm. not much more widespread than that here at this particular festival. Also, much as I love Galovich, not super romantic. <laughs> well, I, I they actually one of the most interesting things about the about the the panel that I went to really was not a it wasn't really a shipping focused panel it really was about like 
how do you write romantic relationships? How do you keep them interesting? And a lot of that centered on, well, like, if you're going to break them up or keep them apart, like, how do you do it in ways that are interesting and don't, you, you have to, like, balance between, you have to have conflict and you can't just have them together all the time. Uh, so how do you do that without totally alienating your audience, without doing the same thing over and over again? Uh, and also, they started talking about how cool it kind of is that we were starting to tell so many love stories on TV that are not actually sexual. They brought up, like, Quinn and Rachel from Unreal is a oh, love story. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just not a sexual love story. Um, you messed up love story. <laughs> it's really And I would up. say something like V and Fiona is a love story that's Absolutely. not a mm-hmm. sexual love story, you know. One of my very favorite relationships on TV recently was uh, Will and Diane on The Good Wife, and it was platonic. They, mm-hmm. were, they were business partners and friends, and it was like... A very layered relationship, not at all romantic, never went into a romantic place, and it was fantastic. But it was still a love story because they were... I maintain that the greatest love story ever on television is Jed Bartlett and Leo McGarry, so... I I would... Totally not sexual. I would totally vote for that. Totally a love story. That would have been a different show if it didn't... (laughs) A show I still would have watched, yeah, well, right. obviously. <laughs> so I, don't, no. I don't think Aaron Sorkin would have gotten it off the ground. No, I don't think it would have been on NBC back then, for sure. Hilariously, um, I don't know, I hope some of our listeners have watched The West Wing, but if you know anything uh, uh, like extra textually about The West Wing, you'll find it amusing that Sorkin told us that one of the reasons they got on the air in the first place was because they had guaranteed, like, sponsorship from dot-coms. And, of course, this was in the late 90s when the dot-com boom was still, like, going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, like, they were getting sponsorships from internet startups and stuff. And that's why NBC said, uh, sure, we, you know, we'll pick up the show because we know these people are going to buy ads. Because they invented demographics in order to sell... To make it marketable. Mm-hmm. Um, like, people with internet access wasn't really a demographic until West Wing. And because they did that specifically because the West Wing didn't test well in their... Traditional. Per, in their traditional like focus the group. 18 to 24. Yes. So I hope, I hope some of you out there understand the irony of Aaron Sorkin saying that his show got... On the air because of the internet. <laughs> so beautiful. It's like the most beautiful irony. He was lovely, though. He really was. Uh, I don't know if he, like... I, Tamar, our friend from the Shipping Room podcast, was like, did he take a class at some point? I like, I, like, he was so gracious that, at, that the first audience question accused him of throwing story grenades to blow up the show... When he, when he left, left it yeah. as the showrunner at the end of the fourth season. And he didn't even, like... He didn't take offense. He didn't get he didn't defensive. Take offense. He didn't get defensive. He, he just... And... I mean, he, his, he could have been... answered the question. His answer could have been full of shit. I mean, maybe he really was. But, but it, like, his answer was totally nice. Even all the panelists were, like, gushing about saying his words. And he's the greatest television writer of all time. And he was like... All right, guys. Like, calm down. Yes, his first down. response was, "Eh, whatever. I write it, but they're fantastic." It's yeah, that it's about how they yeah. perform it. He completely deflected. So, someone learned something along the way. He wasn't very Aaron Sorkin-y, is what we're uh, saying. Right. Pleasantly, he was pleasantly less Sorkin than than you would expect. Josh Molina was exactly what you would expect. And thank goodness for that. Wonderfully so. <laughs> um. So, okay, well, I think that wraps it up for us here from the ATX Festival. Um, hopefully, we will be getting back together maybe at least one or two more times. Now that we only have to wait until October for new episodes, we may just come back uh, in the next couple of months with some things that we want to see in Season 7. Um, mm-hmm. If we hear, like, casting news or whatever, or news related to the new timing of the season or whatever that we think is important to talk about. We'll be back uh, to talk about that. In the meantime, you can still find us on Twitter at AlibiCast. Uh, and I think most everybody knows where to find us personally on there as well. If you've got questions or want to talk to us about something, you can find us there. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.